name is Columbus Batiste. I'm an interventional cardiologist by day and a lifestyle enthusiast by night. Today, I'm thrilled to bring to you an exclusive glimpse into a groundbreaking event that really promises to reshape the landscape of healthcare. Set against the backdrop of March 24th through 26th of 2024, the HELP Conference, Health Equity Lifestyle Project. It's not just an ordinary gathering, it's a, a convergence of minds, it's a symphony of ideas aimed at addressing health disparities. These are simply differences that uh, occur within segments of the population that result in differences in health outcomes. I'm going to uncover what really makes this conference unique, why you should attend its pivotal uh, themes, and why it's a must attend for everyone uh, passionate about health and about community wellness. So without further ado, let's dive into the heart of the HELP Conference and discover the transformative potential it holds for our collective health journey. Stay tuned. I'm Dr. Columbus Batiste, and I am so excited about this upcoming HELP Conference. I can't tell you. And so we have the opportunity to bring on some phenomenal guests with us that will be speaking at the conference. And so today we have Huntsville's, I'm going to call him the mayor of Huntsville, right? He's not the official mayor, but he might as well be the mayor. We have Kenny Anderson. Kenny, how are you doing there, sir? Oh, man, I'm doing absolutely fantastic. I'm delighted to be here. And for the purpose of talking about the HELP Conference, I would not have been anywhere else except for here at this time. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Tell the folks about you, what you do, your background. Yeah, so I currently work as the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the City of Huntsville. I was appointed by our current mayor in 2013, so I've had the privilege of serving in his administration since that time, and my job is essentially people. So north, south, east, and west in Huntsville, it's my responsibility to really kind of have a sense of what the pulse of our community is across the spectrum of our lives. So every quality of life issue, every dimension of life, I am probably talking about it or connected to it in some form or fashion. So we are talking about lifestyle in terms of health. We're talking about access to health care. We're talking about employment, education, uh, the entertainment and social dynamics of our lives. We're talking about everything that people do in a community that actually in increases their ability to not just benefit from being in that community, but also experiencing it at the highest quality. And that's, of course, what we're always shooting for. We don't want people to just uh, live mediocre lives. We want them to live their best lives. And so from the perspective of that, that's what I do. I have a couple of degrees in psychology. So I was a mental health professional for many years. Uh, it's something I still keep my hand in. I get 100 hours of uh, CEUs every five years. So I'm always trying to stay current with what's happening in case one day I may want to transition back into the field. And then also I spent about 16 years in higher education, first as a classroom instructor, then as a department chair. And for the last five years of that tenure, I was the dean of the, of the division of humanities and social sciences. So a lot of work in the area of mental health, a lot of work in the area of higher education, and now in public administration. Wow, wow, that's a mouthful. Come on, Professor, you're breaking it down for us today. I love it, I love it. You know, now I'm gonna go off the beaten path because something you mentioned about your background and what you're currently active in, I want you to tell folks out there who may be on the brink and not sure about if they want to participate with the HELP Conference. And so for those of you who are curious what HELP stands for, Health Equity Lifestyle Project. Health means for all. We're talking about your state of being, your living. Equity means for all. Lifestyle, obviously, in project. And so, so can you tell us why would one, some people may think that the HELP Conference is just for one segment of the population. Tell us from a standpoint in your experience why this is something that pertains to everyone. Yeah, I'll start very quickly with the fact that I have invested in being a lifelong learner. So there will never be a point in my life where I've learned everything I can learn. There will never be a, a point in my life where I've grown as much as I want to or can grow. Uh, there will never be a point in my life where I'll be exposed to every piece of information that's available out there or the people who are delivering that information or have access to it. I wanna constantly put myself and position myself in such a way that the growth potential for my life across the spectrum, physically, emotionally, spiritually, can always be positioned to benefit from being in spaces where people are having productive, in 
insightful, informative, innovative, creative conversations about life and how life can be experienced. The fact that life is really at the end of the day about choices. I understand that genetics uh, plays a role in our development and our experiences. I get all of that. But I even say to the extent that I can make choices about those genetic impacts in my life, then I can ultimately live a better life. You know, if I become aware of something, for example, that I have a genetic predisposition towards something, then I might want to avoid that thing. So from a health perspective, I have the potential to make that choice. If I know from a, um, a lifestyle choice perspective that I've exposed myself to toxic environments, whether that be in the workspace, at home, in the community, and that if I either balance that, if it's difficult to take yourself out of it, or just extract myself from those spaces or create balance in my life. So I'm getting exercise and I'm, I'm balancing my eating through uh, portion control and making sure I'm eating the right kinds of nutrients for my body, you know, not anybody else's, but for my body, then I can benefit tremendously from that. So that's what excites me about these kinds of gatherings, these kinds of opportunities where somebody can look at it and say, mm, I'm not even sure if I'm ready to take that journey or make that next step, but I'm advocating for, ask the question of why not? Why would you not wanna be informed about something? Why would you not want to get educated about something? Why would you not want to engage with people who are experts in certain areas so that you now have the capacity to make the best choices for your life? And that's what I would say to somebody who's maybe either standing on the fence or walking in a different direction. I say, hey, wait a minute, let me tell you something. Let me point you in another direction that actually might be something that you want to consider. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. And and I and I know many of the individuals like yourself who work in the equity field, um, they really are for everyone. <clears throat> the equity is not just something that's isolated to one group, one based on one uh, person's gender or their race or ethnicity, oh, excuse me, or, or sexual orientation. It's for everyone. It's just being inclusive. Yep. It's saying that you have the right towards living a healthful life. And so we want to, to, to convey that to everyone. And so along those lines, when you kind of look at nutrition and lifestyle, what, what role do you think that it plays in, in the, the, the mental health field? Um, in achieving equity, really, in the mental health field. So this seems to have taken off astronomically, our awareness of it over the past several years. Yeah, it's everything. And, you know, traditionally, we've said things like, you are what you eat. And I remember growing up hearing that all the time. And uh, some of the food decisions that I might have been making uh, post being at home with mom and dad, now I'm on my own and I have a chance to, you know, indulge in certain kinds of uh uh, appetites, uh, and uh, maybe that's fast food or something like that. Um, I begin realizing at some point, or I begin realizing at some point that I really am what I eat. So if I now have some kind of physical malady, some kind of thing going on with me physically, um, it's not just because something, um, you know, out here is wrong, just something in the in the universe, in the world, in the space that I might be is wrong. It might be based upon some choice that I made about putting something in my body. And here's the other piece of it that I think we, we've missed over the years or perhaps not emphasized enough. We talk about, we talk a lot about how those choices about what we put into our body impact us physically, but I don't know that we talk enough about how it impacts us mentally. And I know uh, 15 years or so ago when I stopped eating uh, chicken and beef, I said, I was not just feeling lighter, I was also thinking lighter. There yes. was a clarity in my mind. There was a yes. clarity of thought. It was a beautiful experience because it was almost like for the first time in my life, I'm, I'm able to think and process in ways cognitively that I had not been able to do before or appreciate. And so I absolutely recognize and acknowledge that there's a direct correlation between that which we eat and our mental health. When we think about all the mental health challenges and some of the hormonal reactions that are created as a consequence of that, and we think about all the different diagnoses that somebody might have, and whether that's you know bipolar disorder or depression, clinical depression or uh, some other form of uh, mental disability, uh, we need to not overlook 
the possibility that something about our investment in what we eat could possibly have taken us in a different direction. We think about the nature nurture conversation all the time, you know, how much of what we are is impacted by what we uh, are genetically, or how much is impacted by the environment. We think about, uh, and I know I certainly think about food deserts. And I think about the fact that there are a lot of people who don't have access to healthy food. And I think about the fact that obesity is on the rise, especially in children and youth. And I'm very concerned about those kinds of things. I'm concerned about the issue of premature death and the fact that there are people who may um, contract certain diseases needlessly because of lifestyle choices that they've made. And sometimes those choices are made because of what's available to people at that time. And so from an education standpoint, again, this is a very important place to be because people can really learn about how to make the choices that will free themselves up emotionally, mentally, to operate at vigorous and robust levels of their life so that they can think clearer, that they can make more um, productive and smarter decisions as it relates to those things that we are constantly confronted with in life. And um, I also think about the idea that uh, how just how uncomfortable it is if you've overeaten and uh, now you lay down to rest and it's difficult to rest. Perhaps I think about the time of day that we eat. Maybe it's late at night and we go to bed and it affects us. And now we're not getting enough rest at night. So now we wake up in the morning not having been rested enough. Well, that automatically feeds into some of our deficiencies as it relates to our psychological health and well-being. And so there are all these different roots and connections and stems and crossroads and intersections that I think that we owe it to ourselves to consider from a whole person perspective and not just looking at isolating certain things, but understanding that from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, that there are things that are going on based on those dietary choices that impact our brain's ability to be able to function at its maximum capacity. That's right. That's right. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's huge. That's huge. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Last question. Last question. You know, you are you are currently residing in Huntsville, Alabama, the home of the place of where we're coming and bringing this conference, this inaugural conference. And so several things. The HELP Conference, for those of you out there who don't know, we're bringing together an eclectic group of, of professionals not only clinicians across the spectrum of, of, of specialties, but also what's unique is that we're bringing in places of faith, bringing in businesses, bringing in places of higher education. And so a two part question to you, Kenny, why do you think it's important for a construct of a conference like this, that's bringing together community leaders, community-based organizations, along with healthcare professionals is one. And then last one part question is, Tell me why people should come to Huntsville. If they're on the fence and saying, well, Huntsville, why should I come to Huntsville? And this idea of blue zones within Huntsville, speak to that a little bit as we wrap things up. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I would say to your first question was that I really embrace the notion of it takes a village. And that's across the board. It probably started out, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. And we thought about that from the perspective of development, we thought about that from the perspective of education and more. But I like to think about it in a much broader sense that when I have a village, a network of individuals who have different degrees of expertise in certain areas, then it automatically expands my potential to know and understand things that I may not know and understand. I always suggest that one of the most significant parts of the maturity and aging process is reaching a stage in life where it's okay not to know everything, but to know people who know things. So I don't have to know everything. I just need to be smart enough to get to people who know things so that I can learn about ways to improve the quality of my life. So that's the first thing I would say about that whole notion of how these intersections and these opportunities so valuable to people. The network that it creates, the opportunity to connect with leaders in the field, uh, subject matter experts, people who have spent years studying and understanding the body and the relationship the uh, relationship between these things they're not isolated and that when people are able to go aha which is typically what happens in those spaces and people have the potential for something that i'm very excited about and that's transformation and that would be the the, the last part of what i would say and uh, to your answer 
you come to this conference, you stand to position yourself for an experience that I will call transformation. Transformation of one's life is for me like an apex moment. It's like the height of something that somebody might experience. You know, you're kind of going and, and cruising through life. You think life is, has reached its maximum speed perhaps, or you don't have any more tools perhaps, and you may even be content with where things are. And then you have an experience that just rocks your, your mind. You know, it just it just shakes your foundation and you go, wow, I didn't know that. You know, when people make changes, especially this is uh, the first part of the year is always an interesting time of year when people talk about resolutions and things of that nature. Everybody wants to make a change of some type at this time of year. And the reality is that people will come into these particular experiences very excited about the possibility of transformation. They want to transform their grades. They want to transform their bodies. They want to transform their disciplinary approaches to certain types of things. They want to pick up a hobby or skill set or something of that nature. People are looking for transformation. Coming to this conference will be about transformation and the potential to position yourself for greater success in every aspect of your life. I would not miss it. I would make sure that I targeted those dates. I would make sure that I would make every preparation possible to attend this event because it will be transformational. And those are, for me, some of the most unique experiences in life and some of the most productive experiences in life. Love it. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I can't wait to see you and hear more from you at the HELP Conference, March 24 through 26, 2024, at the Huntsville Space and Rocket Center. They are looking forward to seeing you. Kidding. Looking forward to being there and seeing you as well. All right. Take care. We'll see you all out there, too, as well.